a day of thanksgiving was proclaimed in the churches of Manhattan. As we will see, the European colonists declared thanksgiving days to celebrate mass murder more often than they did for harvest and friendship. By the 1670s, there were about 30,000 to 40,000 white inhabitants in the United New England colonies, 6,000 to 8,000 able to bear arms. With the Pequot destroyed, the Massachusetts and Plymouth colonists turned on the tribe that had initially saved them in 1620 and probably joined them for the original Thanksgiving Day. In 1675, a Christian Indian was killed while spying for the Puritans. The Plymouth authorities arrested and executed three natives without consulting the tribal chief, King Philip. As Mao Zedong says, where there is oppression, there is resistance. The Indians went to war. The Indians applied some military lessons they had learned. They waged a guerrilla war which overran isolated European settlements and were often able to inflict casualties on the Puritan soldiers. The colonists again attacked and massacred the main Indian populations. When this war ended, 600 European men, one eleventh of the adult men of the New England colonies, had been killed in battle. Hundreds of homes and 13 settlements had been wiped out, but the colonists won. In their victory, the settlers launched an all-out genocide against the remaining native people. The Massachusetts government offered 20 shillings bounty for every Indian scalp and 40 shillings for every prisoner who could be sold into slavery. Soldiers were allowed to enslave any Indian woman or child under 14 they could capture. The praying Indians who had converted to Christianity and fought on the side of European troops, were accused of shooting into the treetops during battles with hostiles. They were enslaved or killed. Other peaceful Indians of Dartmouth and Dover were invited to negotiate or seek refuge at trading posts and were sold onto slave ships. It is not known how many Indians were sold into slavery, but in this campaign, 500 enslaved Indians were shipped from Plymouth alone. Of the 12,000 Indians in the surrounding tribes, probably about half died from battle, massacre, and starvation. After King Philip's War, there were almost no Indians left free in the northern British colonies. A colonist wrote from Manhattan's New York colony, quote, There is now but few Indians upon the island, and those few no ways hurtful. It is to be admired how strangely they have decreased by the hand of God, since the English first settled in these parts." Unquote. In Massachusetts, the colonists declared a day of public thanksgiving in 1676, saying, quote, There now scarce remains a name or a family of them, the Indians, but are either slain, captivated, or fled. Unquote. Fifty-five years after the original Thanksgiving Day, the Puritans had destroyed the generous tribe who originally helped them and all other neighboring tribes. King Philip was beheaded. His head was stuck on a pole in Plymouth, where the skull still hung on display 24 years later. The descendants of these native peoples are found wherever the Puritan merchant capitalists found markets for slaves. The West Indies, the Azures, Algiers, Spain, and England. The grandson of the pilgrim's original protector was sold into slavery in Bermuda. But even the destruction of Indian tribal life and the enslavement of survivors brought no peace. Indians continued to resist in every available way. Their oppressors lived in terror of revolt, and they searched for ways to end the resistance. One historian writes, quote, The first reservations were designed for the wild Irish of Ulster in 1609, and the first Indian reservation agent in America, like many other American immigrants, had seen service in Ireland under Cromwell, unquote. The enslaved Indians refused to work and ran away. The Massachusetts government tried to control runaways by marking enslaved Indians. Brands were burnt into their skin, and symbols were tattooed into their foreheads and cheeks. A Massachusetts law of 1695 gave colonists permission to kill Indians at will, declaring it was, quote, lawful for any person, whether English or Indian, that shall find any Indians traveling 
or skulking in any of the towns or roads within specified limits to command them under their guard and examination or to kill them as they may or can, unquote. The northern colonists enacted more and more laws for controlling the people. A law in Albany forbade any African or Indian slave from driving a cart within the city. Curfews were set up. Africans and Indians were forbidden to have evening get-togethers. On Block Island, Indians were given ten lashes for being out after nine o'clock. In 1692, Massachusetts made it a serious crime for any white person to marry an African, an Indian, or a mulatto. In 1706, they tried to stop the importation of Indian slaves from other colonies, fearing a slave revolt. Looking at this history raises a question. Why should anyone celebrate the survival of the earliest Puritans with a Thanksgiving Day? Certainly, the native peoples of those times had no reason to celebrate. The ruling powers of the United States organized people to celebrate Thanksgiving Day because it is in their interest. That's why they created it. The first national celebration of Thanksgiving was called for by George Washington, and the celebration was made a regular legal holiday later by Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War, right after he sent troops to suppress the Sioux in Minnesota. Washington and Lincoln were two presidents deeply involved in trying to forge a unified bourgeois nation-state out of the European settlers in the United States. And the Thanksgiving story was a useful myth in their efforts at U.S. nation-building. It celebrates the bounty of the American way of life while covering up the brutal nature of this society. The full text of this essay, Native Blood, The Myth of Thanksgiving, is available online at kasamaproject.org. That's spelled K-A-S-A-M-A project, one word, dot O-R-G. Again, that's K. A S A M A project one word dot o r g music you heard during the segment is licensed through creative commons thank you for listening mm-hmm.